the petition signing next week. Uh, and uh, we have a, a whole committee of people who I'll be introducing or showing you here shortly uh, that we will be going out to getting the, uh, the necessary petition signatures to get the name on the ballot. And then I will hope to be meeting not only with you, but your friends and neighbors as well. So I can convey why it is that I think we need to make a change in Evansburg. When I tell people that I'm interested in running for county commissioner, the question that they ask is, why would anybody do that? <laughs> and I think that that's, that is, in and of itself, an interesting commentary on the state of the political climate in, in our county today. And I am very frustrated with the contentiousness and the, the wasted energy that I see in our current county administration, and I want to make a change. But that's only about 20% of, of why I'm running. 80% of why I'm running is that I believe, firmly believe, that if we have the right leadership in place and a commitment to collaboration among our civic leaders, our citizens, and our educators, the best days of Cambria County are ahead of us. They're not behind us. We can, and, and I believe that we can, create the future in which we, we're going to live. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about why I'm different and what I will do. Let's start with, with what I'll do. First of all, I'm an HR guy. I have spent 30 some years as a human resources professional, so it's a fair question to say, so what does an HR person have to do? What are you gonna to bring to the table when it comes to running the county government? Well, I can tell you this, I have been recruiting and selling this area to individuals one job at a time, professionals, uh, craftspeople, people across the employment spectrum for all of my years here. I know very well the strengths of this area. I know very well the resources that we have, the strengths of our people. I know that, that, that this area has such a, a, a great story to tell. We are very proud of our past, but we shouldn't be hung on it. And people, that resonates with people, that we have got an area that you can come to, that you can create opportunity here, that you can raise a family. I've been doing that for 30 years, so that's one thing. That's one thing that an HR person can do, is sell this area in a way that so many of you are doing. But my number one priority, by the way, let me just say this. For any elected official, you would probably say, you know, I'm going to be responsible with your money. I'm, going to, I'm not going to raise taxes. I, I am going to be very prudent in how we uh, handle the budget. To me, that's just your ticket to the dance. Why would you elect somebody who's not going to be responsible with your money? Why would you elect somebody who has the Jimmy Buffett philosophy that says, I'm going to be very foolish with your money? Why would you elect somebody like that? If you elect anybody that, 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 into, a, into a position of authority as an elected official, they should be responsible for your taxes. They should scrutinize the budget very closely. Every single dollar should be accountable to you. And I don't know about you, but I... I personally am very frustrated with the politicians who have forgotten who the boss is, which is the voters that put them there in the first place. And you know the type. If, it, if I didn't think of it, then it's not a good idea. If I can't take credit for it, then I won't support it. And, and, and if I or the people pulling the strings behind me can't benefit from it, then I won't even talk about it. I think we're done with that. And I believe that you being here today is indicative of the fact that you're done with that too. So how is it if I say the number one priority as a, as a county commissioner is to create jobs and economic opportunity in this area? How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, you know there's basically three ways that you create jobs. One is you go after the big box. You find the big company, the big sugar daddy that's going to come in here and plop down a, a, a major building and, and, with, and bring along two or three hundred jobs and you have that great effect. And, and that's wonderful. I, I certainly wouldn't denigrate anybody's efforts to do that. But frankly, our experience with that has been, since the, since the collapse of the steel industries in the early 80s, the, our, our experience with that has been very spotty. I don't, I don't have to point any further than the uh, Gamesa building up in Evansburg. That came in with a lot of promises and it's empty now. And I don't have to point any further right down the street here with the Aspen building with a, with a lot of hype for a while, but there's nobody there. So the big box theory certainly is one way of doing it. But I think there's two other ways that 
make a lot more sense for our area. One is through entrepreneurship, and the other one is to, is to grow and retain the workforces that are already here. So when it comes to entrepreneurship, you might ask me, okay, so what are we going to create entrepreneurship in this area? And I would invite you, look around. Ask the people that are in here. In this room is a great representative sample of, of the employers that are in this area. We have businesses that are represented in this room today that have less than 10 employees. But they are started by entrepreneurs who have the vision and the grit to start their own business in this town, despite all the challenges that we have, they're here and they're growing their businesses one job at a time. We also have employers here that have 30 or 40 employees. So now they have the full range of, of all the laws and the regulations that have just landed on them and they have got to be able to manage their businesses despite those challenges. And then we have some of the larger employers in this area. They're here but again, they grew their jobs. They may have hundreds of employees now, but it didn't start that way. They grew their businesses and their jobs one employee at a time. That's the secret for our success. And in my mind, the way that you do that is you realize just how much the paradigm has shifted. Everybody talks about our aging workforce. That's right. Our workforces, are, uh, the people in our, in our workforce, they're getting older, and soon they're going to be leaving. So what does that mean to me? That means opportunity. Not only are these people who are leaving their, their jobs creating a job for somebody else, and that is exactly why we here at JWF Industries started a machining apprentice program in our machining division, because as we look into the future, we've got at least, in the, in the next five years or so, at least five or six employees that are going to retire. We have to replace them. Now, that's just one example. Every statistic that we look at says, that our, our labor participation is at the lowest that it has ever been in this area. And why is that? Because people think that there's not an opportunity. And the reality is the opportunities are starting to grow. It's changing now right in front of us. The opportunity is right in front of us. The older people are leaving. That's not a problem. That's an opportunity because they need services. They are, are great citizens. They need support and help in the, in the next, the, the third phase of their life. That's an industry and we can support that. And they're also leaving jobs that have to be replaced, and we can support that. I don't know if we all fully appreciate, and I know some of you, because you're actually working on this uh, in, in, in this area, just how much economic opportunity there is if we collaborate and work together. Instead of fighting one another, what we should be doing is focusing on those people that are getting it done. There are people that have a full understanding of the evident resources that we have in this area, they are getting it done. Those are the ones that are going to get, that will get my time and attention. In fact, I don't really care what political party you belong to. I really don't. If you have an idea and you're willing to work for it and it results in a, in, in a benefit for this area, economic opportunity, a new business, or anything like that, if it results in something better for this area, you will have my full time and attention. That is the one promise I have no problem making as a county commissioner. If you've got an idea, I want to hear it. Sinn Féin is a Gaelic phrase, and it means ourselves alone. We can do this ourselves. We don't have to wait for the big group of, of, of companies from way outside the area to decide to land a big box here. We can work with the people here that are already getting it done. I love to be able to recruit people to this area. I can show them the trails that we have. I can show them the neighborhoods. I can show them the educational institutions. And I will tell you, my, if nothing else, my major position is that our educational institutions in this area are the crown jewel, and we should be supporting them. And, as, and from a county standpoint, we should be especially supporting the Pennsylvania Highlands Community College, because that was specifically sponsored by the county. It was a mistake to cut their budget. We shouldn't have done it. If we really want to grow opportunity for this area and create the workforce of the future, then we have to train them and we have to educate them. That is an investment, and it's an investment that's well worth making from my point of view. And that's not the only idea that we have. When I say ourselves alone, let me leave you with this. My guess is that you've got some ideas on how to create a better Cambria County. And we would like to hear what your ideas are as you're leaving here today. 